Praise the Lord. Welcome to today's ministration. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for our life. Thank you for the life of our family. We cover this environment with the blood of Jesus Christ. I cover this land with the blood of Jesus Christ. I thank you for your mercy and grace. Thank you for the anointing that will be your God, Satan. We exalt and magnify your name. Let us just take this worship song like this. We have a king who came to earth to win a wall for God. We, the children of king, whose fall away he trod. The banner that a king and fury was love to every man. So we must try to show the love in all ways we can. The enemies came to fight and selfishness sin. Then who will be a traitor now? Let us for a mean. The deeds of soft keep our bodies pure, for tears are pure and clean. Can see the glory of the Lord, because we keep our body pure and clean. This all the Lord overshadow. This all the Lord overshadow. Your holy life's kind, joyful hurt. Bring them to the King. Tell it to the world. Tell it to the world. And tell it all 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 to the world. Hallelujah. Burn, thank you. I'm quickly going to go into our message for today. Uh, the topic for today is get God attention on all needs. Get God attention on all needs. Now, by definition, what is attention? Attention is to notice. Attention is notice to be taken for something or someone. You want an urgent attention from somewhere or you want God's attention. And you want everything to be okay because you need somebody's attention for help. So the text, of course, is taken from Judges chapter 18, verse 5 and 6. Judges chapter 18, verse 5 and 6. So in the book of Judges chapter 18, said, verse 5 and 6, said, they said to him, inquire of God, please, that we may know whether our ones on which we are going will be prosperous. And then the priest said unto them, he said, go in peace, and your way in which you are going has the Lord approver. So get God's attention on all your needs. And then in Judges chapter 18, verse 5, said, said that when they approached the prophets, he said that they should go because God has given them the approver. And I pray that God is going to give us an approval on anything, anything we're asking of him to do for us in Jesus' name. So the same thing is in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Now, if you want God's attention, we feel... You can get a message through Revelation Vision or maybe through trans. You go to the book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. At 1 to 13 is speaking God's voice. And you ask the Lord, you go on your knee because you're making an inquiry. You want him in a particular uh, uh, situation in your life. So you will have to ask the Lord to please give you an attention. And so the only way you can get God's attention is by what? Through you and his respect, his trust. So most times when we don't end God's respect and trust, he sometimes can give us some information. So we have to end his own trust. We have to be very patient, both inside and out, and that's how we're going to get God's attention. And it depends on how you love him. God bless you. And I remember last week we did talk about how, uh, that was two weeks ago, we spoke about how Jesus Christ was emphasizing to this disciple that they have to take care of his flocks. And should go around to minister according to the will of God because this is the end time and then they need to hear the word of God. You understand? So Christ, before he left, entrusted the flocks onto the hands of his disciples so that they can disciple the crowd very well. And of course, one vivid uh, example in there is Paul. Paul loved the church so much. Paul loved the uh, temple building. Paul loved the crowd. Paul loved to reprimand when things are not going in the right way. And I pray that God Almighty will make things go in the right way in our life in Jesus' name. So also you can take in Joel chapter 1 verse 1 and Joel chapter 2 verse 17. And how can we end God's approval? Through by respect, through his word. And when he, we call upon him, he will answer. A typical example was about Rebecca. 
Rebecca was pregnant. And then he, she wants to know what's going on because it's, she felt that, you know, something was like it's struggling in her stomach. So when she inquired of the Lord, she doesn't know you need to go to any scanning or go to CT scan or do an x-ray. Rebecca inquired of the Lord and right away, and God, of course, gave her the information she needed. And God told her, you have two nations in your stomach. He said, you have Jacob and you have Esau. He said, one, of course, is going to be uh, more favored than the other. So, but that's God speaking. That's not man speaking. But anyway, when she made that inquiry, she had the favor of the Lord and she put to bed safely. And if you can read, you can go to the book of Genesis, chapter 25, 22 to 23. And then, of course, how can you God get God's uh, attention to all your needs? You know, through trust. You have to trust God. You have to believe. You know, if you don't trust and have faith in him, how can he work in your life? Now, it, it happened in the life of Abraham when God said, can you please go and sacrifice uh, Isaac for me? So if Abraham didn't trust God, of course, he wouldn't want to give his son to uh, for the sac uh, sacrifice that God demands for. So you go to Genesis chapter 22, verse 2. God attention your needs in Judges chapter 13, verse 17. Now, Mona made an inquiry. Mona is a tribe of Judah. He lived in Zora. He married to a wife called uh, Hezabli. God bless you. So, but she was buried. You understand? She was buried. So, but Mona was God's after her. And then the meaning of Mona itself is called consolation. He said, be still. And God was with him because in anything he made, he made an inquiry. He's married to one wife. That's one thing about, I liked about him. So he made inquiry. He asked the Lord, what direction and what path will I go? Now, God will also disclose to you what is to come as you call upon his attention in John chapter 16, verse 19. Now, most times we Christians, uh, we try to rush into things because we see that it's a very lucrative business. Everybody's a registered nurse, so we want to rush in to be a registered nurse. I pray God is going to give us our will in Jesus' name. But let's make an inquiry. If all of us put together today and making this inquiry here on earth, we are not going to end ourselves into problem. If uh, when uh, the, um, the devil came to meet Eve in the Garden of Eden and asked her to get the apple, first of all, he would have said, okay, you know what? Uh, Mr. Devil, uh, can you give me one second? I just want to ask my husband if he said it's okay, of course, I am going to eat the apple. But if my husband said it's not okay, I'm not going to eat the apple. And of course, in return, because um, if uh, Adam paying an allegiance to God, he also is going to pay, ask God and ask God and make an inquiry. God, do you really want us to eat the apple? Do you told us not to touch the apple? Then of course, there won't be any problem. Just a common thing to do make an impair of an inquiry and you get God's attention to all your needs. Now, the other one again is about David. David in 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 22. It said it reveals that uh, the secret was that they have to go and uh, take a certain position of a land. They have to first of all make an inquiry. Same also to 2 Samuel chapter 2 verse 1. David made an inquiry to go out to uh, Hebron. And to the, to the city of Judah, and of course, the Lord gave them that approval to go there. And then they are going to conquer. And the same thing also in Judges chapter 20, verse 18. Now, the Israelites inquired about uh, at Betal, that God would go for them and to the battle. And of course, God is going to give them victory in that battle. Now, we have a lot of whole bunch of people who had made that smart move. Who didn't want to depend on their own discretion, on their own strength of power, money or knowledge, fame, or maybe society approval. What they did was to make sure they go on their knee and ask God, Father, do you want me to get married to that person? What are you saying about it? If, of course, most of us made that inquiry today, of course, they won't be broken home here and there because we refuse to make an inquiry. Of course, Satan take an advantage. I pray that we are going to learn so much from this teaching today and from today henceforth. Before we take a move, made a move, we have to ask God, what's your will about it? Do you want me to do this? Do you want me to go there? Do you want me to get that car? Do you want me to get that home? Do you want me to get that job? Can I go to that school? So we make an inquiry, and which is a very beautiful thing. I admire and, you know, months of so many courage, same people, you know, asking the Lord of what they want, how they want them to go, what to do. You know, I am so pleased about that. One of the typical person that love to make an inquiry such is David. Rebecca made an inquiry, Gideon also, 
You understand? So even uh, Saul made an inquiry, but he only went to the wrong place. I pray we will not go to the wrong place to make an inquiry of what the future holds for us in Jesus' name. In Numbers chapter 27, verse 18, 21 too. And also Joshua also made an inquiry in First Kings chapter 22, verse 6 and 9. Now, the king made an inquiry. I said, okay, well, how are you in Ramad Gilead? He said, are you sure? <laughs> you know, he brought a little whole bunch of the prophets and asked them, what do you want us to do? Are you sure we're going to get this? But of course, the king was so skeptical about one. He said, each time this king says something about me, he's not saying something right. But you know what? I pray that God is going to read us, lead us to the right person who is going to tell us and direct our path, which is good. So it will avoid danger. It will avoid disaster. It will avoid pain. It will avoid mistake and error. It will avoid you know, commotion and collision and struggling and quarreling in Jesus' name because we made a good inquiry. Do I really want this person to stay here with me? All those kind of inquiries, if we make, it's going to be good because it's going to favor, highly favor us. Now, the disadvantage of not making an inquiry, typically we're going to take a, a speak about something. Now, Samson didn't make an inquiry, of course, when it, after doubling to one or two persons, and then, of course, he finally landed on Delilah, and Delilah kept asking him, what's the strength of your power? If you love you, can you please tell me where your power lies? And, of course, Samson made, you know, a, a very big disaster of his dis destiny. He told Delilah where his strength lies, and then, of course, his head was shoven, and because he's a Nazarene, and God said, there shouldn't be any razor upon his head. And then he told Delilah, where his strength lies, the cup is here, the power's gone, virtue gone, glory gone, strength gone, favor gone, destiny gone. I pray you are now. Let us take this prayer like this. Oh Lord, my Father, I refuse to fall into the hand of Delilah that is going to shave my destiny away from me. I refuse to fall into the hand of Delilah that is going to shave away my destiny away from me. Oh God, give me the spirit of an inquiry that every day, every time that I can make an inquiry from you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so Abraham did also inquire, of course, but Abraham did not inquire about Hagar. Guess what happened? When uh, Sarah said, oh, my master, it's like, I'm not giving you any baby. Why don't you go in with Hagar? Now, instead of Abraham to say, no, but God did promise me he was going to give me a child. So what's the point of me going to sleep with Hagar when already God told me I'm going to get a child through you? So guess what? Abraham refused to make an inquiry. He went into Hagar, got a, a child called Ishmael. And today, brethren, with our eyes open, we've been fought by these Ishmaelites. And I pray that God Almighty will help us so that we will not fall into the wrong hand. And we have to have the patience to make an inquiry in the mighty name of Jesus. A whole bunch of people who refuse to make a good inquiry in the right place and not call in call disaster for themselves. So, but I pray that God Almighty will give us the grace and the wisdom, especially the wisdom. You understand? So that we can make an inquiry in the presence of God all the days of our life. And of course, we'll benefit from it because guess what? God will speak through that to you. You understand? So, and one thing about it again, uh, there are some things that God keeps in secret for us that he wouldn't want us to know. So, but the way and manner we approach God matters a lot. What's your relationship with God? What kind of company do you keep, keep around you? How do you speak to God? You talk to him because you're too familiar with him, just like the Babylonian. You know, how do you approach God? Those things that we have to put into consideration on how to approach the Lord so that we can get God's attention to us, whatever thing we want here on earth. And, you know, even myself, I'm not a guru in this area. I learn every day. I ask to ask the Lord, Father, what is your will? I have to go on my knee. And in a sincere part, brethren, especially when you're very honest from the bottom of your heart, God goes... God knows the honest heart. We can't hide it from him. He knows the honest heart. He knows who is honest. He knows who is just coming, you know, being hypocrite. He knows. That's one thing about God. So I pray that the truth, the spirit of truth and kindness will be hung around us. And so that every time, anywhere, anytime, we can stand and say, Father, I'm lost. Can you be my compass through this thick desert and let me pass through? And I bet you, God, you see the Holy Spirit will just appear without you tapping on the computer or tapping on the tablet or tapping on the phone because sometimes the battery will disappoint it. You only think the thick desert all alone. And then, of course, if the battery is gone off, how are you going to get a battery to charge your phone? You understand? So, and then you're there for three days. You understand? So you, you are lost in the middle of a thick forest. What do you do? 
So you ask the Lord, say, Father, here I come. I don't even know my way. Can you see me through? Send down the Holy Spirit to be my compass. Can you, Father, please have mercy. And the moment you speak and you cry unto God in a sincere heart, God listens. Honestly, you understand? I've tried that so many times, but I pray that we should not try to allow pride, ego. We should not allow maybe the puffiness of maybe whatever I think we know. Maybe we know it better. Over familiarity with God, make us not to inquire anything. So I pray that we should not be too much over familiar with God and go and humbly go on our knee and ask him, Father, direct my path. Help me please to direct my path because I've made many errors already. I've made many mistakes already and your mercy has gone, through, have gone for me already. Please, Father, I do not want to land in hellfire. So I'm making an inquiry because I want to know the right path to take in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Brethren, thank you so much that we've come to the end of this program today. For those ones who haven't got, given their life to Christ, you can say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I come to your presence, O oh God. I know I'm a sinner. Father, have mercy upon me. Forgive me my sin, O oh God. I entrust the whole of my life, my body, my soul, my spirit, everything to you care. Because I remember we spoke about the quality of man last week. And I told you the, the whole compartment of a man is... One, the body, the soul, and the spirit. So we hand over everything to God. That God should please take possession of us. We do not want any other thing to take possession of us. We're asking the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to come take possession of us. To lead and guide us through in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Take this prayer with me. For those ones that you have said that little prayer, Christ is going to come into your life. You are newly welcoming to the fold of Christ. And God is welcoming you and dispatching his angels for you. He's going to bless you abundantly. And write your name in the book of life from today henceforth favor and mercy will come to you in jesus name let us quickly take these prayer points before we close for the day say oh lord my father give me the patience to go and the spirit of inquiry to father so that i will inquire towards every need in my life in the mighty name of jesus christ god so father overshadow us god with your favor and mercy visit us specially so that we can inquire and seek your face in every endeavors of our life in the mighty name of jesus because we don't know anything better Except through you, let your mercy and your grace go after us in Jesus' name. We pray, brethren. God bless you, and I want you to quickly come with me to to the welfare room shortly after this. God bless you. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you. We thank you for your children. I thank you for the viewers. I thank you for the subscribers. I thank you so much for what you've been doing for us. I thank you for any man or woman who bump into this message. Their life will never remain the same again. You shall bless them abundantly, O God. We thank you because, O God, you overshadow us, God. Father, and cover us specially with the blood and the fire of the Holy Ghost, God. Let your mercy overshadow us, God. Let your anointing break the yoke of Satan, God. Well, Father, connect us to our divine connection. Say this after me. Say Father, connect me to my divine connection. Father, connect me to my divine connection. Say, Father, connect me to my divine connection. Say, Father, connect me to my divine connection. Say, Father, connect me to my divine connection. And brethren, God bless you. The Lord, of course, did say to God, we should get ourselves ready. This is the second time again the Lord revealed this. Harvest, 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 harvest. Position yourself for what? Harvest. God is going to give it to you. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you and see you next week. Brethren, please, I want you to put a like button onto this ministration share and of course subscribe and hit the notification button and i bet you your life will never remain the same because guess what the word of god is food to our soul to our spirit and god will never leave you alone alone to walk through the path is going to come with you in jesus name we pray hallelujah father we thank you for your mercy lord you are good Ancient of this, you are good. Daddy, we give you all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you and see you next week. Bye for now. Pastor Esther.